Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Crimson Vow Draft here on the channel. My name is Nikolai, and in this video, I will be taking you pick by pick and play by play through a Crimson Vow Draft, talking through all of my decisions so you know what to do in your own Crimson Vow Drafts. If you do enjoy it, remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more draft content, and comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. If you do want a bit of a rundown on the format with top comments, archetype overviews, and things like that, you can find my Crimson Vow draft guide on my channel as well. Okie doke. So, opening up this pack, we have a strong Mythic Rare right off of the bat. A 3 4 for 4 with Flash is already reasonable, and then this one's going to start pumping out 1 1 tokens when you either like probably play a creature a lot of the time in the right deck build. So, this is going to be the pick out of the pack. But let's talk about what we would do if this was not in the pack. I think the best cards after this are the two of the uncommons, Storm Chaser Drake and Ballista Watcher. Storm Chaser Drake works really well with the auras that are attached to the disturbed creatures, and a two mana two one flyer is just a good rate. And then Ballista Watcher can like ping things and it can flip and it's just a good werewolf overall. So I like both of those cards as well. I think I would lean towards the Drake just because it's a little bit cheaper. And then in the common section, I like Gift of Fangs the best, I think. Uh, there's also Ragged Recluse, which I want to try out. Depends on how many blood tokens you can get, but this card can be pretty powerful. And then, yeah, but pretty easy Cemetery Protector here, starting off with a strong Mythic Rare. That's where you like to be. Interesting stuff. Second pick, we see a Geist Hunter. Not a particularly powerful Planeswalker as things go. Just... The fact that it doesn't really affect the board if you don't have a creature and there's not a ton of tokens. Like, we happen to have one of the few cards in the set that actually does generate tokens, but making one extra 1-1 one, one is not really worth your 3 mana. Uh, after that, there is a Griffwing Cavalry, a card that I kind of want to try out. I'm not sure how good it is because uh, it's, like, a very expensive flyer. 4 mana for a 2-2 two, two is just below rate, and even though it can get a counter, it's kind of hard to, like, get counters on it sometimes. There's also Kindly Ancestor, a card that I like. And then in the comment section, there's Bleed Dry, Gift of Fangs. I think Bleed Dry is better. And then there's Kindly Ancestor as well. I think I would rather try the Griffwing Cavalry, even if it's potentially worse than the Kindly Ancestor. And I do want to try to stick to my colors to have my Cemetery Protector. I think Bleed Dry could very easily be the pick here. I've been finding the removals pretty important in this set. And so it certainly could be the pickup. Okay, moving on to pick three. We see Brinecomber as a gold card that could go pretty well with some of the stuff we have. Um, has like a blue-white gold card. There's also Lantern Bearer. And then there's Spiked Ripsaw, a card that I still want to try out. I haven't. I keep drafting it, and then I always get like pushed out of green or whatever. And so I haven't actually gotten to use this yet, but it seems pretty powerful to me. And then there's a Wolf Strike. I'm very tempted by this Brinecomber. Especially because there's also a Lantern Bearer in this pack, which is another good blue-white card. Or just good blue card in general, but there's a blue-white gold card, so and we have kind of a good start. Um, we have been seeing some black cards. This is the third good black card in a row, so maybe we're supposed to take the Gift of Fangs. Or we could take this Spike Drip Saw. I kind of want to see where we can go with the Brian Comer, maybe. Okay, we keep seeing good black cards, so now might be our chance to take something like an Undead Butler. We we'll might maybe end up with some ways to exploit our own creatures or have them die, or we could just have it like sit in play as a deterrent from attacking us. There's also Geist Light Snare. And there is a few solid black cards. The butler's pretty good. After that, I would probably take Gluttonous Guest or Vampire Slayer, just to have a two-drop, but I like the end of Butler here. And we do see a Mischievous Cat Geist, which is a card that I've kind of wanted to be trying out. We have some evasion already to potentially put the back half of the aura on. There's also Rending Flame, which is just a fantastic removal spell. Just going to be my pick out of this pack. Seeing one of these pick five is a really big signal. And Gift of Fangs again. We're seeing some black cards. Hmm. Here there's a Militia Rallier. There's a Vampire Slayer again. 
Rural Recruit. Ancient Lumberknot. We did just get a pretty good red card, so maybe we could try to incorporate that into our strategy. I think Militia Rallyer could be good with some of our... Like, if we have any training creatures. Also, Skywarp Scab. Kind of want to be able to play this Rending Flame. The Militia Rallyer plays well with the Cemetery Protect... With the, I mean, Griffwing Cavalry. Okay, and now we see a Honeymoon Hearse. I haven't gotten to really try this one out. Also, a relatively late Lantern Bearer. Belligerent Guest. Let's stay our, keep our options open and take the Lantern Bearer here. I think it's the best card in the pack. Spore Crawler. I think the ship has sailed on green. This card is okay. Mulch is okay. Cradle of Safety is fine as well. We could take the Courier Bat. Because if we do end up in black-white, it's a pretty nice option to have access to. I think we are going to end up in a white deck of some kind. Blue-white's also decently likely, and Cradle of Safety can play well with some of our cards. Maybe we try to take the Cradle of Safety. Try, try that one out. Keep noting that the Courier Bat is there. Wheeling Cruel Witness. A shield basher plays well with the cavalry escort also lacerate flesh adamant will maybe i'd rather just have adamant will i've not like been super impressed when i've seen that card it's been okay but i think i'd, I'd want to try the admin will get some more reps with that one wolf strike coming back around also leaves me more flexible because i know i want to play white and i could still play these other colors could just take a vampire slayer I do like the Wolf Strike. I think it's pretty solid. Wow. Ripsaw and Lantern Bearer came back? Well, that's kind of wild to me. We're seeing a lot of late green cards here. I'm going to take the Lantern Bearer and go to blue-white, I think. Just because I think the Brine Comer is pretty powerful. But it was close, because we could have totally tried going in, like, a different direction, like going to green, but we didn't really have as much good green. And now with, like, two Lantern Bearers, it makes the Brine Comer pretty good. Radiant Grace. Giving, giving our guy Vigilance maybe is okay. Retrieval... Retrieval has seemed okay. What's this guy do? I discard a card so it works with blood tokens. That card seems hard to use. Everyone's taking the blood token cards very highly. Scab goes well with none of my cards. I guess I can just take a militia rally here. Kind of like that. Gets a nice beefy card for the ground. And now gutter skulker. Super non-bow with the Ruben Militia Rallyer. But it can just take over the game. There's also a Steelclad Spirit. That's a nice defensive card to pair with all of my... Like, pretty solid flyers. I want to try the Gutter Skulker. Seeing a Blood Hypnosis here. And then we get a Lunar Rejection. Pretty good card. Seeing some nice red-green Werewolves cards. I'm surprised that we got past like some late red-green stuff and then we're also seeing red-green this direction. Looks like people at this table don't really value the Lantern Bearer, but I still don't want to take the chance because I think it's so much better than the Shield Basher. I'm glad I have this Brine Comer. Hmm. So I do want Synergy Pieces with the Lantern Bearers. So pretty much just any creature. 
I think I'm not going to get there on Wretched Throng, but if I do, it's much better than the Vampire Slayer. So I think I'll speculate. I did see one earlier. Hmm. This card takes a long time to flip. I think I'd rather just have Syncopate. This card's good with all my flyers and all my disturbed stuff. Heron Blessed guys would also be fine. Interesting deck right now. I feel like I've ended up in blue like all the times I draft this format, but I think it might just be because just variants and stuff. I don't know. I have four lantern bears, which I'm pretty happy about. I mean, be worried about that arena bug that tries to like make you unable to play more than four copies of a card. White hasn't been super open. Or maybe we just haven't been seeing good white cards. But white is open? I don't know. Okay, normally I would take the Steel Clad Spirit here, but since I already have a Wretched Throng, getting a second one's pretty nice. Wow, late red-green cards that are pretty powerful. Where was my path into red-green in this draft? I mean, I'm just seeing, like, everything I would ever want for red-green here. Which could be just because the person passing me was in red-green. But then why was I seeing late spike rip saws and wolf strikes and stuff? Don't get me wrong, my deck is still pretty good. I think. Good creature count, a lot of synergy with spirits. I think I'll take the fleeting spirit. Perfect card to put a lantern bearer on. I can even like discard my disturb cards if I really want to. After that, I would maybe take Chill of the Grave. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, you create a 1 1 spirit. Oh my gosh, getting past Henrika Domnathi. Where were those cards in pack one? I mean, I guess I saw a couple black cards, but this card's a beating. I think I'm already kind of committed to white-blue, though. Like, I've already got a decent number of white spells. Switching to blue-black would be really tough here. And I want to see how white-blue plays out. I think I'm going to try the Whispering Wizard, because I do only have four non-creatures officially, but I also have, like, all of my Disturbed cards... And there's another lantern bearer, but maybe that'll wheel, and I probably don't need it. I want to try this this guy out. Kindly ancestor plays well with all my flyers. Wow, we're just seeing all the red green stuff. We could have had a sick red green deck. Piercing light. I'm, maybe I, I kind of want to try this thing out. Deal two damage. I have a lot of flyers, so I'll be able to attacking in the air. I'm not a huge fan of Cruel Witness. I already have decent four drops. Ooh, another Wretched Throng. Nice. Actually, Dollhouse, of course. Hmm. Hmm. I already have a lot of cards that exile themselves for value. So Dollhouse is just a slow card that doesn't do as much for me. This guy's going to be great in my deck. This card will also probably be solid. Good two drop. Wouldn't mind a retrieval. Selhoff and Tumor. Seems good with all my Disturb cards. There's also Arm the Cathars, which hits like a truck. I think I want to sell Hoffman Tumor. There's Syncopate. 
over Soul Cipher board. I think Militia Rallyer is probably going to get the axe. I got the Nebelgast. Wow, just getting a fifth Lantern Bearer. I knew I'd have to worry about the bug, but it stops me from playing as many copies of the card that as I want. Just all these red-green cards. Hmm. I have enough two-drops. I need to be very careful not to accidentally click on a lantern bearer because if I click one, it won't let me put it back in my deck. Just dangerous game we're playing. So 43 cards here. I already cut the militia ralliers. I have better three drops now. This guy in particular is quite good for me. I really like the sell off and tumor with all of my disturbed guys. Six, two drops, I think. Seven two drops, actually. Five, six, seven. Piercing Light could go. I think I want to cut the Shield Basher. Mm, Syncopate is interesting. I don't really hold up my mana for anything. Maybe I want to have one of each of these instants. So like one Syncopate, one Adamant Will, one Cradle of Safety. One Lunar Rejection. Maybe I only want one Syncopate. And I have this Whispering Wizard, which seems pretty good. It's just non-creature spells. Adamant Will could be a card I cut as well. I kind of have Cradle of Safety to do a similar thing. What are my colors looking like? 17 to 7. I'm still going to go 9-8 because I still need double white for my Cemetery Protector and I still need white for my two drops here. I only need one island to really function. Which is just the way it goes. Sometimes you can't have perfect mana all the time. But yeah, this deck looks sweet. I'm excited to try it out. I'll see you folks in the matches. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content, my channel, at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. And special shout out to those at the credits level. It is thanks to Patreon support that I'm able to make as many videos as I do. So if you found my videos to be of some value, maybe they've helped you win a couple of extra games on the arena ladder, or maybe you've crushed your FNM because of some of my advice, and you want to help me continue making the videos, then Patreon is the best way to do so. And as my way of saying thank you, you even gain access to some pretty cool Patreon exclusive rewards, like access to my card by card grade spreadsheet, my tier list for Crimson Vow, which is an excellent bonus resource to help you crush your competition, especially early on in the format when a lot of people don't know how to evaluate the cards. But anyway, I do hope you are enjoying the video so far, regardless of whether or not you decide to become a patron. And without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. We will keep this hand. Wretched Throng is a card that I'm still, like, testing out. I'm not sure if it's very, like... I'm not sure just, like, filling my deck with a bunch of these is good, but, like, a 2-1 that dies into a 2-1 is reasonable, it seems. Maybe it's just bad. I think I want to make sure I hit my land drop, so I'm going to play the Selhoff and Tumor. Then I can ditch the Wretched Throng. I still think I'm going to do that. And that gives me something to do with my... Instant speed. Oh, they didn't have syncopate. Nice. So the wizards hit the battlefield. Kind of can take over. And they concede. Nice. I'm glad I didn't get too fancy there. I considered just flashing in the cemetery protector. To play around a counterspell. Maybe it would have been better.
thinking about it more, I think it would have been better to just wait and cast the Cemetery Protector at the speed. I was trying to bait out a counter spell, but I guess they're roughly equal if they survive. Because they're both making a bunch of 1-1s. One okay, good hand. A lot of value attached to our creatures in this... In this deck. I'm gonna do this. I can then use my cemetery protector once my stuff is traded off a little bit. Oh my gosh, punished by my tapping. What a fail. Ah. attack still, which is nice. This thing's going to become a 2-2 in a second anyway, and this way I get some wretched throng value. Oh, I should have used the Cemetery Protector to get a couple extra 1-1s, one maybe. Oh, they get the 1-1 one -one and then it flips? Wild. strike seven creatures they have four blockers the one's a flyer so only two go through this is cute I like the fleeting spirit. No! I must say, that feels a bit unfortunate. And they're gonna gain some life.
Oh my gosh. Have to hope for the best here. Thank goodness, no combat trick. And then I can make some jump blocks. And then I can suit this thing up with a first strike as well, with the, with the aura as well. I can like discard it on that turn. No, you monster. Now they can't gain life though, which is nice. Oh, I messed that up. I knew I needed to, I needed to set a stop on their second main phase. Because this thing won't come back now until my end step. Which is a total fail. Like, I, I, I just... I was like, oh, I'll do it on their main phase. And then I forgot that Arena just passes through their main phase. Could have been relevant. I'll keep that in mind for the, for the next time I need that interaction. I'll just set a stop on their second main. Because I, I want, don't want to inform their attacks. I don't have to. So it's definitely better to wait. It's just a matter of whether or not I can <laughs> properly implement it. Like, in paper, I would just say... Before your end step on your second main phase. Discard this. So far 2-0. Oh. The deck is performing great. The lantern guys have been good. I like it. We'll get to see how Griffling Cavalry performs. I'm not super optimistic, but I'm excited to see nonetheless. Plays pretty well with the Skulker, I guess, because it can get a counter. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't play well with the Skulker. Skulker plays well with the Cradle of Safety, though. Jeez Louise, just a complete disaster for me. That card's insane. I'll get my last wretched wrong out of the deck. I want to keep my life total high against this. Jeez Louise, I'm so screwed. around plus two plus two and trample not playing around sure strike also not playing around that card They have because of this thing two, four, six, eight, eight drain. Ooh. 
This card's just messed up. Kindly Ancestor could just carry me here. That would be insane. No! Not that that card was overwhelmingly important. Oh, I'm one point of damage off. Was I supposed to chump last turn? Then I'd be at 15. This turn I would take 4, 7, 8, 9, 15, 16, 17. So this turn they have enough mana to sacrifice. 1, 2, 3, three things. So 4, 7, 8, 9, 15, 16, 17. I just have to hope to find an extra power somewhere. Oh, do I have any just straight up auras that buff my creature? Oh no, this thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, I die. This thing's just disgusting. Totally changed how I had to play this game. That triple block that I made was like something I would not have wanted to do. I could because I was gonna hope to race them, but I can't race that card ever. I just I doubt that I'll ever beat that card if it resolves. There's just the removal in this format just doesn't kill it. Oh my gosh. Maybe I was supposed to do the double chump anyway the turn before, just so if I did draw like something else I could maybe do something. This could be good. The cat geist. I think I'm on the play. I am. Oh my gosh. If they don't have a two drop, cat geist can take over. It's cat geist time. Yes. Yes. Little cat, little cat, winning me the game. I'm just going to pass and counter whatever they play. And then next turn I'll bounce whatever they play. Kind of how I saw this card playing out in my head. Oh, that's cute. Second, if I say anything right, it makes sense. So now I can put the cat guys onto a different thing and then have cradle of safety to protect it. They're churning through some value, which is nice to see. It's kind of a close game. 
So far, nobody's played any rares. Why didn't I attack with this other spirit is the question. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, the game was actually like interesting. I was doing some stuff with my cat geist and then just game over. Oh, man, that is just brutal. I was just commenting on how it was like an actual game. They were getting some value from their exploit stuff. I was getting some value from my cat geist and my spirits and my just devastating. Gosh. I don't know. I think I can play. I don't think I can play that game differently. Am I supposed to like not like I have to use my syncopate earlier because it's just like correct. <sighs> that is really a tough, tough moment. Good job, Wretched Throng. They always come in pairs. It could also be the case that Wretched Throng is not worth playing if you don't have a way to use the 2 1. But, like, a 2 1 that dies to go 2 1 is still fine. I'm not going to play around any sweepers. I can use this. I can protect this guy. If they do have a sweeper. And then buff it up. They should have waited till my end step. So it wouldn't come back. No, but it's still going to be untapped by their turn. What? 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 They don't block. Why don't you block it? Oh, I guess they can't block. It's. I thought the, I was thinking this was a two five for some reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? I'm still confused that they didn't try to like trade or something. <laughs> what just happened? We just didn't block. Okay, we blocked up the 50-50 win, right? Let's go. We just have to keep dot. We just have to keep playing these matchups where there isn't some game-ending rare that I just can't possibly beat. I haven't had a single deck with a good removal spell in it. I feel like it's just so hard to get them. I have had a lot of decks that have very good rares of my own. Um, like I've had Tox Real before. Like there's a lot of rares that's happily killed, and like they just kind of end the game when they come down. It's kind of an insane vibe. Like, we haven't had a set like that in a while where it's just like, there's, I feel like I've lost so many games to them just like playing just insane rare on like turn four. And I'm just like, I can't win anymore. It's just not a good feeling. It's almost like um, playing constructed and they just like land a planeswalk and you're like, wow, this, game, this game's over, but I have to keep playing to try to like make the most of my 10% edge or whatever. Oh my gosh, great hand here. Drop three, drop four, drop 
Bum bada bum bum bum. Even like block, discard, lantern bear, make this thing a 4 2. I'd rather get this thing down now. I'm gonna get that guy into the graveyard and save 4 damage. I should be doing this post like second main phase. But like saving four points of damage really helps me take the lead in the race, especially because I have this life linking thing. They're incentivized to kill this, which means my wizard might survive. You're a wizard, Harry. This thing blocks their board. Hand Mariner, sure. I'm gonna gamble on this. It's a high upside plan. If they do kill it, I'll just play the Gutter Skulker. Another one, okay. I can make this into a 3-4 flyer. Or I can jump with it and make something else a flyer. I kind of like that plan better. Maybe I jump with the kindly ancestor. This game is really interesting and close. Feels like my decisions really do matter, which is always nice. I can also sacrifice this to Stitched Assistant, which is certainly relevant because then I can give something flying by surprise. So I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure. Okay, so they're tapped out. So if I can find a land, I win. And we did it. Now that was a fun game because I I felt like it was really kind of fun to, like interesting to navigate. They didn't have any interaction, so I think it was almost deterministic. But like if I had played it worse, I wouldn't have won. I don't think because I got them with Exaxes there, and it was really kind of close. I don't know. That one felt like very satisfying. I enjoyed it. Definitely enjoyed that one. Also, the wizard guy has been pretty good. The three two. I've liked that guy. 
On the play. I'm quite reliant on this thing. I'm gonna keep this hand. It's pretty bad, but I think it's like on the bad end of keepable because this is like a really good card and can get me a two for one. That was an incredible draw. Still a two for one. Gosh darn it. My value, my sweet sweet value. Oh man. This is an interesting game as well. Deep in thought. Every creature they play costs them two damage. I can't afford to attack right now. Jeez Louise. Jeez. He 
even then boffing that up isn't gonna matter. This is just terrific. Have to attack. I have to end the game because this thing can just ping me out. This has menace, so I'm just dead. Because why would it not have menace? Oh, it's very frustrating. I found this format to be very frustrating sometimes. Like, that game was really close, and if they'd play, like, a six drop that doesn't have, like, a billion abilities, I don't know. I probably still would have lost. But it would have been more interesting than them just having Pinger slash Menace slash everything. Because I could have double blocked it, flickered my guy. 4-3, not a terrible record. Pretty solid, actually. Eventually, I'll break the 4-3 threshold. But feels like a difficult format to conquer. I'll have to do some thinking about what I need to do. Maybe I just have to play every syncopate I have, every counterspell, everything that could potentially interact with a big creature before it hits the field. That could be an answer. Maybe that's just way better than Piercing Light. But yeah, Piercing Light would have been good in that last game against their 3 twos, so hard to say but yeah that is going to do it for this draft video i mean five lantern bearers we had a pretty sweet blue white deck and i hope you enjoyed watching it as much as i enjoyed making it well i did enjoy most of it so let's just say that even though i did complain a little bit so hopefully my complaints were not too off-putting uh but yeah <laughs> i did enjoy making it overall pretty fun deck interesting games most of them some of them um and uh we didn't really get to try the griffwing cavalry out but maybe the card we'll try it again in another draft kindly ancestor really performed lantern bearer was great i really liked the fleeting spirit this card was fantastic cat guys like won us a game oh no we lost that game because they had tox roll it would have won us a game and uh gutter skulker was pretty good too anyway that is going to do it for this draft guide if you did enjoy it remember to draft video make it if you did enjoy it remember to hit the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel for more draft content comment below with your questions thoughts and feedback if you did make it all the way to the end of the format in the comment section down below leave hashtag uh, bearing lanterns because we had a lot of lanterns that were born through the air um, or hashtag fleeting light because the lantern bearer there's light it's fleeting I don't know uh, to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video if you would like to support my content you can do so via patreon patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas you can buy Nikolai Bolas merchandise which is also linked in the description down below you can find my articles the Nikolai Bolas discord server all of that good stuff linked in the description down below uh, if you yeah, I hope you really I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're enjoying the format. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below as well. And yeah, that is going to do it for this draft video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you next time.